Hello, welcome to this documentary about film music. My aim is to find out about the techniques used by composers in specific movie genres. I managed to get in contact with a film star, a composer and a film theorist in hope that they could answer some of my many questions. To start the documentary, I thought I'd get some shots of me and my crew looking really serious and professional, setting up some expensive equipment and maybe throw in some arty shots of instruments like this and some musical equipment like a big large recording desk and maybe from some different angles just to set up a musical environment. And that's me, David, and here's my crew. First there's Dee, he was on camera on the first day, and then there's Simon, he was behind the camera on the other days. This is Jamie, he held the boom mic and was in charge of audio. And finally Mike, he was in charge of lighting. The first interview was with this guy, Sergei Shaw. Sergei is an influential film theorist from Germany and was nice enough to meet up and talk about the effects of suspense music in film. So as the background music fades out, let's sit back and listen to what Sergei had to say about suspense music. Uh, suspense music, well, as a composer, suspense music is a good play of it because you can always change the audience's perception to what's on screen. Um, it could be just a neutral image of a hallway, add a low rumbling motif, uh, and uh, you always assume that something bad is going to happen, when uh, sometimes nothing does. It's uh, just playing with the audience. The most, success, the most successful suspense track was uh, John Williams' uh, score for Jaws. Uh, it's, uh, it starts slowly. It starts very slowly. It's just like da da, it's pausing da da, and enough that there is more silence than music, and then it builds and builds and builds. It's brilliant. The music just uh, grinds away from your emotions and throws you into a scared and anxious state. Then, well, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'll probably get a new bulb somewhere. Okay, well, I will have a quick break. Um, yeah, you go get the, you go with the, you get the thing. Okay. Um, do you want a coffee? Yeah. Or uh, sure, I'll have a black yeah. coffee, please. Okay, I'm done. Um, right. Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. Is anyone there? Hello. Hello. Uh, anyone? Anyone there? This. Anyone here? This is not funny. Hello. Hello. Jesus. I got some uh, coffee. Night vision. You're right. Um, oh, nine, 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 As you can see from the look on Mike's face, we had no idea what just happened, so we simply decided to call it a day and hope we had better luck tomorrow. This is Betty Kalanak. Betty is one of the most sought after composers in Hollywood, and we were lucky enough to meet up with her and discuss music in romantic scenes. Ah, romantic scenes. They're brilliant. String sections are extremely prevalent when it comes to romance. Some chick flicks use pop ballads like Dirty Dancing or Officer and a Gentleman, but most commonly used are the strings. You know, when the man returns to the lady after being away for so long in military deployment and there's a ridiculous amount of lens flare and the strings begin to play in a major key and they gaze into each other's eyes. And... They exchange some cheesy dialogue about how it was so hard being away from each other for so, so long. And they no longer care about each other's flaws, just as long as they can be together, blah, blah, blah. And then boom, they embrace. And there's this 
swirling, crescendo, powerful, silky stringness. And it's horrifically cheesy. But it just works, you know? Take, for example, Hans! Betty, I knew you'd be here, right? Gentlemen. Please, a moment. Hans, why did you come back for me? It's been four years. They need you out there. Betty, they wanted me on a mission that was damn near suicide. What is a war worth fighting for if it means I never get to see you again? But Hans, your charity work in Africa. You're supposed to build a dam to stop the flooding. Hans, someone could die! Don't worry, Betty. They all moved away from the river, so oh. frankly, my dear, they didn't need a dam. But Hans, what I told you before you went away, will you still want me after what I've done? I want you, Betty. I want you despite your flaws. Betty, if I can't handle your flaws and you're at your worst, then I sure as hell don't deserve you at your best. But Hans, how can you come back and expect me to love you again? It's been four years, four years it took to get over you. Really, you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't but call how me- how can you come back and expect me to pick up where we left off? I thought I'd never see you again. And I need to, this will, I need to adjust. It may take some time. Maybe this will help the process. Our last interview was in Cedars Cafe with the Hollywood action movie star John Zimmerman. John was several hours late, and although his PA was very apologetic, he seemed to neither care nor notice. Anyway, we asked him what he knows about music in action sequences. Fast pace. That's a secret. Rhythmically charged and fast pace, you know, to keep up with the action. Lots of uh, drums and percussions. At least that's what I was told by the composer of my latest action movie, Quadruple Overkill 3. Part two. What was I? Anyway, this uh, this composer guy, uh, John uh, Hank, uh, what's it? Hank uh, Zumba. Is that what's his name? What? Zimba. Speak up. Zimba. Zimba. Zimba? Uh, potato, potato, whatever. This composer guy, he comes to me and, he, and he's got this document. On, okay? Right here. And he says to me, this was written by him and his composer pals, okay? And it contains the equation of creating the perfect movie score. And I said to myself, John, I said, John, you already scaled the pinnacles of perfection as an actor. <laughs> hey, hey, the evidence is out there. There's an online article, you can look it up yourselves, in the men's acting community website, Players Play As, which says that, okay, I tell you what, let's put a link, let's put a link right here under the screen so people can look it up themselves, right? Write this down. Anyway. I figured, since I am perfect as an actor, that I could also be perfect writing a movie score. So I, uh, I borrowed this document from him. He wasn't that keen on me borrowing it from him, but <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, don't call me the bad boy of Hollywood for nothing, you know? Try and keep up.
find them? Huh? Did you find them? No. I lost him. I lost him. What's that down there? Huh? Big mistake. Pal. So, as John Zimmerman and his PA walk off into the distance, it's clear that although learning little, I have experienced a lot. Plus, it is safe to say that whenever I do my next research documentary, I shall stick to reading books.